Sani Bonani, Dumelang, the Macheroni, good day. At the World Economic Forum some years ago, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft Corporation, said, and I quote, I'm most grounded on the role of technology. Ultimately, to me, it is about the human capital and the human potential and technology empowers humans to do great things. You have to be optimistic about what technology can do in the hands of humans, close quote. The digital economy is at the heart of the fourth industrial revolution. As we have witnessed in the last few years, we are undergoing seismic changes based on digital transformation, which quite simply refers to the adoption of digital technology to transform services or businesses. In particular, the digital economy speaks to the economic activity that results from this digital transformation. This shift was apparent during the COVID-19 pandemic as companies that had been quick to adapt to digital transformation were able to continue with their systems and functions almost seamlessly. As Professor Brian Armstrong wrote for the conversation, the digital economy will soon become the ordinary economy as the uptake and application of, of digital technologies in every sector in the world grows. Close quote. It is apparent that we cannot dismiss the concept of the digital economy. So against this backdrop, how do we adequately prepare our youth who face a startling unemployment rate? According to the World Economic Forum Future of Jobs report, developing and enhancing human skills and capabilities through education, learning, and meaningful work are key drivers of economic success of individual well-being and societal cohesion. Close quote. According to the global consultancy firm McKinsey and Company, you will need to excel at social and emotional, technological and higher cognitive skills in order to succeed in the fourth industrial revolution era. Accordingly, our education system needs to be redefined. In part, this refers to reframing the skills of the existing workforce. There is recognition of the need to upskill and reskill workers to cope with new technologies and digitized processes and employers have been looking to accelerate the upskilling and reskilling processes and the implementation of necessary programs to do so. While new roles, opportunities and industries emerge, we are under pressure to bridge the gap between skills, automation and jobs now before we face a global challenge of chronic unemployment. It is expected that in this new normal, there will be parity in time work between humans and machines, with human labor being directed towards managing, advising, decision-making, reasoning, communicating, and interacting. The Future of Jobs 2020 report suggests that while 85 million jobs could be displaced by 2025 due to the change in division of labor, 97 million new jobs could emerge in the same time period in the 26 economies included in the survey. Thus, with projections that gig, contract, and work-on-demand arrangements will become more prevalent, more coordinated policymaking and development is required to support workers in finding meaningful employment that can sustain livelihoods, while also developing wraparound social supports that can offset changes in the nature of work. These include interventions that introduce transferable skills to public education systems such as coding, robotics, and enhanced IT skills, rethinking the nature and structure of higher vocational and technical education to respond to the needs of a changing job market. What this fundamentally calls for is skills revolution, if you will. Yet currently, South Africa remains woefully ill-prepared for this shift. As an Accenture report states, numerous structural deficiencies remain hampering South Africa's ability to fully integrate new technologies into the economy. Close quote. Those weaknesses include the quality of education systems from primary to university levels and scientific research institutions as well as weak innovation ecosystems at a national level and poor enabling infrastructure to support growth. This, coupled with low levels of trust and a lack of collaborative mindsets, hinder the creation of such an environment. The question then becomes, how do we prepare for our youth population who face 
the prospect of unemployment. This feeds into some of the recommendations of the Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which released its report in the year 2020. In particular, commission, the commission of which I, I, I was a deputy chair calls for the, a redesign of a, our human capacity development that will link our entire pool of potential employees with productive and decent work. In order to achieve this, a comprehensive view of the entire human capital system must be developed and the leverage points which can be accelerated by 4IR need to be identified. What is envisioned is a four-pronged approach. Firstly, government needs to prioritize the aforementioned redesign of the human capacity development ecosystem. This will be facilitated at the Human Resource Development Council, assisted by the 4IR committee and driven by digital forum. Secondly, the private sector made up of both large businesses and small, medium and micro enterprises needs to outline what skills are required and collaborate on strategic projects for mass skills developmental development linked to various industries. Thirdly, labor unions need to review their role in light of 4IR and recommended appropriate worker pro protections. Implementation of these protections will have to be done in collaboration with the government. Fourthly and finally, academic institutions ranging from schools to universities to technical and vocational education and training colleges need to review their curriculums with a focus on 4IR to ensure the relevance of qualifications based on requisite skills and the principle of lifelong learning. The paradigm shift represents untold potential for youth entrepreneurship. As TechCrunch, a digital economy news site notes, and I quote, Uber, the world's largest taxi industry, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory. And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation, Provider owns no real estate. Something interesting is happening. Close quote. What is apparent is that we are fundamentally reimagining the future of work and challenging traditional boundaries. The caveat, of course, is that our youth must be equipped with the right skills to tap into these opportunities. I therefore would like to think, thank Mr. Patrice Mutsipe as well as Dr. Precious Mutsipe. Uh, and the Mutsipe Foundation for inviting me to come and speak. These issues are important, and together as the South African society, we can be able to tackle the issue of economic growth, the issue of youth empowerment, the issue of the, workers, the work of the future, and together we can do more. Niawonga, Bayadanki, Ndiyaribuwa, Kialibuwa.